Hello, this is Salvatore Vinciguerra, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the Oleno State Park in High Springs, Florida. Please enjoy this video. In this video of the Oleno State Park, I'll be sharing with you the history of the state park. It not only has some unique features from its past history of being a lottery gambling type of town and a pass-through, which had a cotton gin and a sawmill here in the 1870s, but it also has some very unique geological features, which include sinkholes, hardwood hammocks, river swamps, and sand hills. Later in this video, I'll be sharing with you the RV campsites and the other recreational things that you can do at the Eleno State Park. In my many travels to the Eleno State Park and just passing through on my way to New Orleans, I always try to stop at the state park as I find it to be very relaxing and there's lots of wildlife in this particular area which you can view in the evening and that's when I'm filming this video. This area of the park was discovered in around the 15 to 1700s, but it's always kind of been here. This is where the Santa Fe River disappears and goes underground and comes out in the middle of nowhere, some several miles away from this location. Its flow is expelled from the underground into the surface to continue its massive flow. This natural bridge was traveled by Spanish explorers, Indians, and settlers alike. Some interesting facts about this area is that in 1824, there was a road built. It's called Bellamy Road, and it was named for its builder, John Bellamy, who was a wealthy plantation owner. The road was the first in Florida to be funded by federal money. The Bellamy Road ran from east to west, crossing the St. John's River, going from Pensacola to Tallahassee, the capital of Florida, to St. Augustine. It was only fitting that a town would in time appear along the banks of the nearby river. A pioneer town was started by 1840 by a man named Henry Madier. The town was referred to as Kino, which means gambling, as this was one of the pastimes of the town and played widely throughout America. Kino was played much like today's bingo and sometimes was played with pieces of corn on a board marked with numbers while a collar called selected numbers. As the town of Kino grew, the main livelihood was mills, which were powered by the river's harnessed energy. Dams were made by embedding cedar slats across the river, backed by barriers of large rocks to direct the flow of water towards the mills. Valves were then channeled by planting large logs into bank edges. Some of these remnants can still be seen today when the river's water level is low, usually during the fall of the year. Two grist mills, six cotton gins, and one cotton seed oil gin with a circular sawmill for lumber were in operation. A dry kiln, the only one of its kind in the area, was also in use. The artifacts contained in this pavilion are what remain of the town of Leno's grist mill machinery. Just downstream from the suspension bridge, you can still see remnants of the dam and rock foundation left from the grist mill. After viewing the remains at the river, one can understand its design and function with the dam diverting and or channeling water to a wheel that powered the grinding stones. Before other forms of power became available, the harnessing of water for grist mills to grind seeds into meal or flour was common throughout the United States. By the 1870s, Kino had a general merchandise store owned and operated by a well-known proprietor by the name of Colonel George M. Wetson. Some say Wetson called the town Kino because he considered it to be a risky business venture. The town also had a large hotel with a door on all four sides. The doctor of the town was Dr. William T. Thomas. There was also a blacksmith and a public library stable as well. In 1876, when Colonel Wetson applied for a post office for the town of Kino, the postal department denied the request due to the name Kino and what it meant. Mr. Wetson then changed the name of the city from Kino to Leno to justify that it was a decent town. The post office was put upstairs above the general store along with the telegraph office. In 1890, Colonel Wetson moved the post office to the sister town of Mikesville, three miles away, and this was a thriving town around 1889 with churches, an academy, and several schools. 
Colonel Wetson even had a house there with a balcony where all kinds of politicians would come by and make their speeches to the public. In 1894, there was a rumor that a railroad from Alligator, now called Lake City, was going to come through the area of Leno. This made the town hopeful that more progress would take place, but the train bypassed the town and went to Fort White and said. Dissent soon followed, and the people of Leno moved on to other growing communities in the surrounding area. The last record of the town of Leno was in 1896. By the 1900s, the major crop for the area were oranges, cotton, and tobacco. The Leno State Park and the River Rye State Preserve Park have over 20 miles of hiking, biking, and equestrian trails between them. And at the Aleno State Park, what you're seeing right here is part of the hiking trail, and this particular bridge was built in the 1930s by the Civilian Conservation Corps, which was a public relief program created during the Great Depression. This particular trail here follows the coffee-colored Santa Fe River as it bubbles and flows serenely toward the River Sink which you saw at the beginning of the video. You can have a lot of fun just walking across the various suspension bridges and other features in this state park. And these suspension bridges are also found in the Hillsboro State Park and several others throughout the state of Florida, which are built by the Civilian Conservation Corps.
This is definitely a state park where I can see families and other types of gatherings in the area that I just shown you as they have a large picnic area and pavilion set aside for that particular function. There's also a children's playground and this looks like the area where you could launch either your canoe or your kayak. However, I've seen pictures of people swimming from this particular launch area and I don't understand why they're prohibiting people from swimming in the Santa Fe River. However, I do know that there are sightings of some alligators along the trail and this could be one of the reasons why that they are prohibiting swimming. 
If you were allowed to swim in the Santa Fe River, keep in mind that the temperature of the water is about 72 degrees or colder because of the Florida aquifer, and I would assume that the Santa Fe River, because of its fast flowing pace, would be great for river tubing, swimming, snorkeling, and scuba diving, but maybe there's been some incidences with that undertake, or maybe there has been a, some problems it's also possible that they prohibit swimming and other types of activities in this water because of the, either the height of the water, depending upon the time of the year, or maybe people are a little bit too adventurous and they get too close to the sink and they start having some undertow problems as that water goes underneath the earth. Lynn Buchanan, who is a photographer, wrote about biodiversity and the beauty along the banks of the Santa Fe River. This is an excerpt from her post. Along these various trails, you're going to find different wild sections of the Santa Fe River. Sometimes you're going to be encountering dying trees and other decaying life forms that provide a whole life support system for other creatures that you would find in the forest. For example, sometimes a tree is struck by lightning but fungi, plants, and all kinds of organic material are also being sustained. Out of death comes life. The cycle always continues when it is death by natural means and not by poison or clear cutting. Just imagine all the teeming life here. Sometimes we encounter areas in nature which seem quite congested with life, say a jungle or a place like this. Perhaps some ingrained instinct for order tells us this is unsightly or that there is so much we can easily come in and alter the balance. Yet when we do this, we do not fully understand the implications of our actions. Nature has its own balance. It's places like the Santa Fe River, where there's a huge amount of biodiversity and often the proliferation of fungi, plants, and other life forms here and in the tropical rainforests are in fact the cure to our ails.
This is the trail that leads to the sink that you saw at the beginning of the video. If you're looking at this particular trail, you can see how level it is. And it's very accessible for people in wheelchairs. And that's one of the things that I do like about this park. And it's kind of rare in a state park or even a national park to have wheelchair accessibility all the way to different parts and on the hiking trails. And it's very nice. They have so much nature right here is a little squirrel trying to climb up the tree. Sometimes you can see deer in this area and different types of wildlife, even the different environments that they have here. If you're looking on the side, they have various trees, they have palms, they have cypress trees, they have oak trees, and just the vegetation is very interesting and beautiful to look at as it changes as you're walking on this trail.
Now I'll be sharing with you the RV campsites at the Eleno State Park. The Magnolia campsite, which is where I'm staying and sharing with you right now, is just steps away from the main park area which you just saw previously. Each of these campsites have electric and water, a picnic table, and a firing and are very secluded from one another. There's also a bathhouse with a laundrateria and it even has its own play area for the children. Now there is a big difference between staying at the Magnolia Campground and the Dogwood Campground. My first time RVing, I actually stopped at the Dogwood Campground and the spaces are very tight. Sometimes you're backing up uphill and it was very uncomfortable because there's so many trees and I almost hit some of those trees as I was trying to get into my campsite. Now as you can see in the Magnolia Campsite, you have a lot of space, there are no trees, it's very easy to back up in these areas, and there's plenty of space. You don't even have neighbors to bother you. So this is one of the reasons why I stay at Florida State Parks is because it's very clean, it's secluded, and you know, you have the privacy that you want to at night instead of having a big camping area where everybody is surrounded. And not all Florida State Parks are like that. So make sure that you're studying your campsites well. And this is one of the reasons why I've made some of these videos so that you can see the actual campsite areas and you know what you're getting into before you book them. And sometimes you can book them 11 months in advance and you need to do that during different times of the year, especially here in the state of Florida. This next video of the white-tailed deer was actually taken the next morning and the best time to see the deer are either in the evening or early in the morning and they're right there, sometimes right in front of your face while you're walking to and from your campsite area. This is the area by the Santa Fe River that I showed you earlier in the video, and it's great for either Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, church camps, clubs, or maybe another organization that maybe wants to have some sort of retreat. They have plenty of pavilions in this area and just places for people to get away and have a lot of fun here. So as you can see, this is centrally located in the park. There are about 16 cabins with no electricity, but they can hold up to 120 people. They have about two bathhouses in this area, a dining room, and a recreation hall. To make reservations at the Eleno State Park, look in the description box of this video, and I've posted a link for Florida State Parks and this particular state park specifically. Other amenities or experiences at the Eleno State Park include Bicycling. Visitors can enjoy a leisurely bicycling experience along the park's main drive or a more adventurous ride on several of the park's nature trails. The park offers 11 miles of multi-use trails for hiking or biking, and this trail system also connects to the River Rise Preserve State Park trail system, providing an additional 35 miles of multi-use trails for hiking, biking, or even horseback riding. If you've been listening in this particular video to what's in the background, you're going to hear a lot of the various birds that are available in this particular area of North Florida. Bird enthusiasts might expect to see a variety of migrant songbirds, northern bobwhite, eastern wild turkey, barret owl, red-headed woodpeckers, bachman sparrows, and many more birds. The Santa Fe River is also an unpredictable fishing spot, so you can actually bring your fishing pole. Sometimes the fish bite and sometimes they don't. So come on and take a chance right here at the Eleno State Park. All the fishing within the park must conform to the regulations concerning size, number, method of capture, and the season. A fishing license may be required, and for more information about this, please go to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission's Fishing in Florida website. Paddling is actually allowed, and this is actually a great way where you can canoe or kayak and enjoy the area's scenic beauty and wildlife. Paddlers must go upriver and return as canoeing downriver is prohibited due to the location of the swimming area and the environmental sensitivity of the river sink. 
There's actually canoe rentals available, so make sure that you contact the ranger station about $3 per hour and $15 per day for a canoe. This is a beautiful morning walk, and there's certainly a lot of wildlife at the Olena State Park, as I've stated before. You can see rabbits, deer, turkey, and a variety of reptiles and amphibians throughout the park. There is a nature center, which is open at 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So if you wish to see either the Nature Center or the Civilian Conservation Corps Museum, which is right where this deer is standing in front of, this is a very interesting type of place to visit, and you're going to really get your money's worth learning about the history of the state of Florida. Inside of that particular building is just some memorabilia. It still is very interesting to go inside and learn about the Civilian Conservation Corps who built most of Florida State Parks and some of them are the most beautiful state parks because of the architecture and all of the various buildings that they built here as they were working on the different state parks and per trying to preserve the area. This is Salvatore Vinciguerra. Thank you for watching this video on the Yoleno State Park in High Springs, Florida. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to this channel, and have an amazing day. Thank you.